welcome to go get it today's video session is continuation of the video session which is based on syntax analysis phase in this video session we will be seeing first and follow set calculation and the ll1 parsing table construction so before we proceed further i would strongly suggest to go through the video session which is based on syntax analysis where we have uh, explained the ll ll1 parser so this video session would concentrate on the first and follow set uh, calculation and the usage of first and follow set to construct the parsing table for ll1 parsers so there are certain rules associated with first set and follow set so the uh, we'll go with first set first so the first rule says that first of any terminal that is small letters generally describes in the form of small letters the first of any terminal gives always terminal this is the basic rule then uh, moving ahead with uh, the first very first rule says that a gives a alpha where a is any terminal and alpha can be set of any terminal or a non terminal so in that case the first of a that is the terminal is always equals to the non terminal the very first non terminal in case of a al gives b alpha where b doesn't gives epsilon epsilon is nothing but the empty string then first of a can be calculated as the first of b and in the uh, else in the another case we can see that where b gives epsilon the empty string then we can see that first of a always gives first of b minus the epsilon that is the first of b calculation say gives you a and epsilon then will uh, uh, minus the epsilon from that set and will union it with first of alpha looking into the follow set follow of s s is nothing but the starting symbol is always equals to dollar if a gives alpha b beta provided b beta that is this symbol doesn't gives epsilon then follow of b this follow of b is always gives all always can be generated from the first of beta provided beta doesn't gives epsilon if a gives alpha or alpha b then follow of b can be calculated as follow of a if a gives alpha b beta provided beta gives epsilon this is the uh, contracting case of this follow of b gives you first of beta minus epsilon that is the first set of beta will we need to calculate then union it with follow of a so these were the rules followed while calculating the first set and follow set i'm not going in detail why we need first set and follow set this must uh, this is the basic rule we need to um, construct the parsing table uh, for the ll1 parsers the compiler generates the parsing table to get the rules uh, 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 based on the uh, symbols present on the stack and the incoming uh, input string so based on that uh, and the combination of these uh, operations the i mean uh, the parsing table compiler um, co considers the parsing table and it calculates the uh, rules uh, to be applied so uh, we'll uh, consider some problems where we'll be calculating the first set so we have been given this grammar s tends to ab where s is the starting symbol a gives small a b gives small b so we need to calculate the first set so the first of a will be calculated as a which is followed by the first rule this this is the first rule so a gives a the very first symbol then we have first of b again we will get small b that is the terminal and first of s first of s is a b so we'll calculate first of a because a doesn't contains any uh, epsilon rule so we won't consider b here so first of a is nothing but a so we'll get first of s is a, as a now consider one more example here now we have a the same example with epsilon rules now first of a becomes a and epsilon here and first of b remains the same b now first of s we need to calculate first of s gives you first of ab but we can see that first of a contains epsilon so in such case what we will do we'll calculate the first of a that is a and epsilon which is calculated earlier we'll negate the epsilon symbol from the first set of a and we'll union it with first of b that is b so we'll get first of s as ab now follow set calculation 
do remember that this is always calculated for normal term, uh, non terminals so follow off as being a starting symbol it is always dollar so from the first uh, first uh, second rule we can say that follow off s is dollar then follow off a so follow off a is nothing but where is uh, we need to locate the a in the given grammar first so we can see that follow off a is here so follow off a is nothing but first of b the first rule so first rule says that beta beta can be a set of any uh, terminal non terminal we have b here in the form of beta so b uh, doesn't gives you epsilon we can say here so first of beta that is first of b is equals to follow of a that means b then follow of b follow of b is nothing but follow of s that is dollar from the third rule now let's consider one more example uh, where we will calculate the follow set so we have been the uh, we have given this grammar that is e gives you t e dash then e dash gives you plus t e dash under epsilon then we have t f t dash t dash gives you star f t dash and epsilon and finally f gives you bracket e bracket and then id so this is the given grammar we need to calculate the follow set here so first of all we'll calculate follow of e follow of e or uh, just do remember uh, mind here that we'll write follow of follow symbol in the form of f o here after so follow of e is the starting here e is the starting symbol so you can directly say that dollar then follow of e dash look at e dash here e dash we have this one so we'll get e dash that is follow of e dash is equals to follow of e so we'll directly say that dollar but again uh, we are making mistake here that follow of e here we can say that dollar but again we have e here so follow of e is first of this symbol so again we'll add one more symbol here dollar and the bracket similarly follow of e dash is nothing but follow of e so this will also gives you dollar and bracket now follow of e after that we'll calculate the follow of t dash so follow of t dash so the very first t dash which we can locate here is this one so follow of t dash is nothing but follow of t but follow of t we need to calculate follow of t is first of e dash <clears throat> so we'll calculate follow of t here let this be pending for the some for some time we'll calculate follow of t follow of t is nothing but first of e dash first of e dash but first of e dash contains plus and epsilon this gives you plus and epsilon so follow of uh, follow of uh, t gives you first of e dash so uh, following the last rule we'll get follow of t is equals to plus dollar and bracket i i, I hope you are following me so uh, i i can uh, assume that uh, follow of t calculation is very much easier for you we are following the final or the last rule here plus and how do we get the dollar and uh, bracket here we are getting the follow of e here so uh, follow of t is nothing but plus bracket and dollar and finally we have follow of f follow of f is follow of f we can see here that the first of t dash first of t dash gives you epsilon and uh, so uh, first of t dash gives you epsilon then follow of t so finally what we are getting here is 
star minus the epsilon then follow of t that is plus dollar and the bracket so this will be the final set of follow set of follow of f so this is how we calculate the follow set for the given grammar now we'll see the construction of the ll1 parsing table but there are certain thumb rules associated with it so just do remember these thumb rules fill the columns with the first set of non terminals if first of non terminal contains epsilon then look for the follow set so we'll uh, shortly see uh, how does this uh, will imply uh, um, uh, imply these uh, rules on the construction table if multiple entries appear in any column then we can conclude that the given grammar is not ll1 so this is the main uh, thumb rule where we can directly say that the given grammar is ll1 or not if a grammar is ll1 then it is unambiguous so this whole set shows you the unambiguous grammar in un in this unambiguous grammar there is a set which is called as ll1 grammar so if a grammar is ll1 then it is unambiguous grammar so the uh, consider this given grammar for this we need to calculate whether this given grammar is ll1 or not so we'll first calculate the first set and the follow set of the given non terminals so the following the same rules we'll calculate the first of s becomes a now first of a uh, if you assume uh, if you can calculate this should be a and b so we'll get a and b here first of b becomes a and epsilon similarly for first of c we'll calculate b and epsilon now we'll calculate the follow set s being the first uh, uh, starting symbol so we can say that dollar is the first follow set of s then follow of a a b and dollar so follow of a is nothing but first of bc but first of bc gives you a b and epsilon so we'll get a b minus epsilon union of follow of s so we'll get a b and dollar i hope you are with me and um, we'll calculate the follow of b here now follow of b gives you follow of uh, first of c but first of c contains epsilon so we'll get b and follow of s that is b and dollar and finally follow of c follow of c is nothing but follow of s so we can directly say that dollar now um, in the previous video session we have discussed about the ll1 parsing table how we uh, construct the ll1 parsing table now let's concentrate on the filling part of the ll1 parsing table now uh, we have uh, on the in this side we have all the non terminals and on the top row we have the terminals of the grammar so we need to see the first set of s so first set of s contains a so this complete grammar this whole grammar will be considered under a and we'll write this grammar under this because this a has been generated using this grammar then uh, first of a first of a contains a and b so a is generated using a tends to a and b is generated using a tends to b b so we can put the a tends to a in under a as a is in the first set and a tends to b b which gives you b will be uh, put under the b column i hope you are with me and then uh, we'll calculate the first b first of b we'll see that we'll see we can see here that it contains a and epsilon so in the uh, thumb rules we have seen that if at all it contains any epsilon we'll look for the follow set of the given non terminal so first of all a is generated using the grammar b gives a so we'll write b gives a under a now we have epsilon now look for the follow set of given uh, given non terminal so we have b and dollar which is generated because of b epsilon so we'll write under b b gives epsilon and again under dollar b gives epsilon so this way uh, the epsilon rule follows similar is the case with c first of c contains b and epsilon so under b we'll write c tends to b and under dollar because follow set contains only dollar so we'll write c tends to epsilon now this is the construction of the ll1 parsing table now we need to check whether any multiple uh, entries are there in any column multiple entries by mean uh, it means that if it contains any multiple operations for the same uh, i mean say for example if you would have uh, some uh, grammar uh, in the form of a uh, gives you uh, say for example b so this contains two entries for the same first set so then in such case it won't be a uh, uh, 
it won't be any more a ll1 grammar but in this case we don't have any multiple entries in any column so we can directly say that this is a ll1 grammar so we have discussed the first set calculation follow set calculation and the ll1 grammar and the ll1 parsing table construction to be in continuation i would strongly suggest follow the video uh, based on syntax analysis phase thanks for listening subscribe for more videos you can demand your uh, you can mail your demand at demand@gogetiit.com thanks for listening have a great day